So I haven't seen Project E30 in a while, and I really want to check out what these guys have done. Uh, we're here at Broken Motorsports, not Broken Sidewalk. Obviously, these guys are getting some work done out here. But this is Broken Motorsports. We're in Union City, New Jersey. And behind here, somewhere, is <laughs> where Project E30 is. And uh, we've got the cage on it. We've got some new stuff. And I haven't checked it out yet. Come on. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get it out of here. All right. Here we go, let's check it out. If you've been watching the Drive Series Born a Car, you know how Ryan got our $2,000 BMW ready to run a stage rally. Now the plan is to run it in other motorsports events too, so installing the roll cage is a huge deal. On this episode of After Drive, we go deeper into how to build a cage that's not only safe and rigid, but that also meets the specs motorsports rule makers demand. I'm back at the Broken Motorsports shop in New Jersey, talking to fabricator Justin Hinman. Justin's built tons of rally spec cages, including this one, so he knows his way around the tubes. So I'm, I'm finally getting to see your handiwork, Justin. Um, I know you did this cage. I want to see what you did because when we go to compete in this thing, I want to make sure that my melon doesn't get cracked and um, we keep the car intact just in case anything happens because obviously safety is a huge thing and uh, in the abstract, safety is important, but also for the rule book, right? right. Safety is important also. So yeah. tell me about this cage you built because this thing looks super complex. Um, and like how much of it is rule book and how much of it is just your changing things to fit the car? Well, pretty much any cage starts with the driver and the rule book. Um, basically you have the rule book says what bars need to be in place and you know, where they have to be certain heights from stuff and whatnot. So that's where we start is with the rule book and where the driver is going to be comfortable sitting. Right. So, I mean, basically you need, you need to figure out the, you know, where the, where the seat's going to fit. And like, I mean, you, obviously when you spec this out, do you use like PVC tubing or like, do you use any kind of, you just, like, how do you start out figuring out what the cage is going to look like in the car? Well, everything starts with the main hoop. That's the, what everything in a roll cage builds off of is the main structure. And then from there, it's really just eyeing up the shape of the interior of the car and making things fit as tight as possible to the interior of the car to give more uh, space for the occupants, mm -hmm. which is a safety aspect as well as a comfort aspect. And then from there, it's just, uh, you know, making sure that everything's as far away from the driver as possible and everything's where it needs to be per the rule book. Right, so speaking of the rule book, right? So the rule books for different racing events, obviously, are different, right? Yeah. So because this car is gonna be competing in multiple events, we had to kind of standardize um, some of the things, sort of use the highest common denominator on some of the rules and, and make it fit for the others. So tell me about this setup. This is, the size of the tubes are important for chump car, right? Right. But the layout and the construct of the cage is important for NASA rally, right? So how did you reconcile those two things? So basically the design of the cage is a NASA rally or which is really an FIA rally uh, design with a few bars that we add for a little bit extra support in certain areas. Um, so it's a rally design and then we just upgraded the bars that needed to be upgraded for chump car and road racing, Got it. which is essentially just door bars, the rear down bars, and then the bars they make the X in the main hoop. Got it. So Chump Car, you know, their safety is countered with um, lower cost, right? So right. they use thicker bars, but a less complex structure. Correct. System. Yeah. Whereas in Rally, like, you know, cars rolling is kind of a regular event, right? Yeah. So <laughs> they really consider. So what are the things that make this more of a Rally cage? And obviously in Rally, you do really need to make sure that there's a passenger that's equally protected, right? right? So what are those those pieces of this that are more rally oriented? It's essentially just making the cage um, completely symmetrical. Because a lot of road racing rule books will spec out a certain door bar design for the driver's side, 
and passenger side, whatever. Right. It doesn't matter, nobody over there, we don't care, type <laughs> right. thing. So with Rally, it's identical on both sides. And then with the bar, the X bar and the main hoop, uh, you're only required to have one diagonal for road racing because again, one driver, one person in the car, right. really only need the extra support on the main hoop there because if you hit on that side, who cares, nobody's there type of a thing. So you have the structure of the cage um, and then you also have how it's fastened to the car. How do you right. figure that out? Uh, that, again, it really starts with where the main hoop has to go for the driver, right. um, where the driver is comfortable, whether I need to push it further, a little bit further back or not. That determines where the main hoop goes and when, where I need to make plates for that. Mm -hmm. um, the rear bars are generally tied into the rear strut towers. Sometimes they just go down to the rear fender wells. It kind of is a mix between what the customer wants uh, what the car is going to go through mm -hmm. and what's safe. Right. So the front bars are really kind of just where they're going to be uh, easy to weld all the door bars mm -hmm. and also where they're going to provide ample protection. Right. I mean, so, you know, basically, so in some cases you're looking at the structure of the car itself, right? I mean, yeah. I do look at sub where the subframe is and you look at all the other hard points. Is that on certain cars, you have to look into where the suffering is and stuff. On a lot of these unibody cars, it's just sheet metal everywhere. So right. it, it's kind of like just got to reinforce it and make sure that it's not going to punch through and roll over or something. Tell me about translating the rules into an actual cage. Because, you know, in some cases, some of the smaller sanctioning bodies don't have the funding, right, to put together a rule book that's, um, you know, quite as detailed, like as you know, an FIA rule book or, you right. know, something like that, where it's really, really well spelled out. Like, you know, NASA, I'm sure it doesn't have that the kind of funding, right, to put something like that on. Right. And, and even smaller organizations probably, you know, cut and paste from other <laughs> books, right? So quite literally. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so how do you know that you're when you build a cage that when you go to the race, that tech isn't going to go? Yeah, you did almost everything, but then you didn't do this one piece. Right. Well, there's a standard way that a lot of stuff gets done in a roll cage, no matter what organization it's for. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just a matter of whether everything meets the rule books. If it meets the rule books, you can go say, this is what your rule book says. Like, this is what we did right. because this is what your rule book says. If it's something that's like an extreme like issue that like we see as a safety issue, we'll contact organizers and be right. like, hey, what's up with this? This is not right. <laughs> right. You know, did you ever run yeah. into a case where like, it's just something's not right in the rule book just because maybe it's a typo or something and quite frequently. Yes. So, I mean, talking about safety, I mean, look, look at what you've got going on here. This looks pretty safe. Yeah. Well, safety is number one key with, uh, with roll cages. Obviously. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, all the, the gusseting and stuff that you see is actually per the rally rule book. They uh -huh. require these uh, taco gussets. So, the, right, these here, so this basically connects the bars together, right? Yeah, it keeps them from separating in a side impact. Mm -hmm. uh, they require those anywhere there's an X uh, junction, kind of like what you have there, what you right. have in the main hoop as right. well, just to keep them from separating under extreme stresses. And it's not to be confused with the gusseting of, you know, running dimple die plates down the A pillars and stuff, which a lot of people right. like to do. Right. That's actually a sign of a fairly poorly built cage because right. one of the safest things to do with a roll cage is to actually weld it directly to the body, which we did with this car in 14, 15, 16 spots, something like that. Wow. I can't remember right now. <laughs> so that's a ton. So it's really, I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty well uh, well positioned. It's it's, it's there, anywhere. it's not going anywhere, and it's gonna stiffen the chassis up as well as being a lot safer. That's great too, right? So that's a side benefit yeah. to the safety is that you've got a stiffer chassis and uh, you know ultimately a, uh, a quicker turning car if yeah. everything else is equal and done. Ideally, yes. Yeah, ideally. I mean, tell me about getting to some of these welds though, because I mean, you know, welding is something, I'm, I'm just gonna say like, uh, people I talk to like, Everybody I know says, if I could only have thought about this beforehand, I would have been a welder. Or like, 
It's the one thing that like, everybody it's says like how they want to do. photography was in the mid 2000s. Right. <laughs> That's exactly. It. That's a hundred percent. Holy sh! The most apt comment. You're right. It was like photography. It's, it's, it's like, no, I'm buying all it's this. The introduction gear. of technology and everything getting cheaper. Now yeah. Now are a lot cheaper than they used to be. Right. Like you and can get Instagram a Lincoln happened. kit. Like <laughs> how much is like a Lincoln? All right. Wait. 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 A licking, licking, a licking. Lickin Is that what I'm licking, kids? I'm looking at some welds, and I don't really know how you got to some of these places. Like, how do you, how do you get like up under here or like way down in the corner? Like, how do you weld that part? Those are actually pretty simple. The way I build all these cages, they're up on these plinth boxes, is what they're called, right. uh, as you can see everywhere. So basically, I get. I get those and I just tack them in place, don't weld them in place. And I put the rest of the cage for the most part and at least all the bars that I need to weld tight spots on mm -hmm. and get all those together and then I drop the whole cage down ah. and I can very easily weld them up top. Actually some of the better looking welds are up top because they're comfortable. Right. You know, I'm not crawling inside and like laying on some pieces of foam with my head resting on the pedals trying to weld something. You <laughs> well, know? what's the most uncomfortable weld to do in here? Um, I wouldn't say the most uncomfortable, but one of the most awkward welds is on the door bars uh, where they meet the main hoop here. Mm -hmm. On the back side where they're kind of against the body, I actually had to, on this car, I was able to hold a mirror in one hand and the MIG gun in the other and <laughs> just kind of finesse it, <laughs> which I have to do quite a lot. <laughs> well, the mirror, that's funny, like a mirror must be a pretty good tool in yeah. here because you're always, you're welding behind corners and stuff. That's, yeah. that's really interesting. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what, like looking at this thing, I feel pretty good about um, like driving this on a racetrack because, you know, in some of these new series, uh, you know, they all take, and not to, I don't want to bag on anybody, like, right. like you know, Chump Car and, and Lemons mm -hmm. uh, and all the NASA guys, like, it's, they're really serious about safety. Right. I've seen, though, some <laughs> cages that, that were, looked like um, they were a little hacky. And so it's, I'm glad to see that this one is not hacky at yeah, all. Yeah, we, we, we try to make them as safe as possible. Like I said, cool. safety's number one, so. Well, good deal. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Oh, of course. And, uh, you know, we're going to see how this works a little bit later this year. I can't wait to drive it. Good. Thanks, man. Of course. <laughs> Awkward handshake <laughs> over the door. That's right. <laughs>